In this video, we just want to talk about some of the uh, kind of big definitions to start off a stats class as, as well as um, talk about a way to describe a graph. So right here, I've just put some, some definitions of statistics uh, because we are now starting stats. Uh, statistics is a branch of the scientific method which deals with the data obtained by counting or measuring the properties of populations. Statistics is a branch of mathematics dealing with the collection, analysis, interpretation, and presentation of masses of numerical data. Statistics is using methods for drawing conclusions from results of experiments or processes. Finally, my favorite, statistics is the theory of information with prediction making as its objective. Notice that nowhere in here did I say it was probability. Okay? Statistics and probability are always linked together, but they are not the same thing. The idea here is that we gather information, we analyze the information, we display the information, and we use that information to make reasonable predictions. That's where probability might come into play. All right? All right, let's move on. Some, some easy uh, things to think about at the beginning here. Individuals. Individuals are the things that we are studying. If those things we're studying are humans, we call them subjects. But if I'm taking the, do the, uh, the weight of golden retrievers, then the individuals are the golden retrievers. If I'm weighing soup cans to make sure that the quality control is such that they're all the same weight, the individuals are the cans. Okay? Variables are the characteristics of that individual that I'm studying. For example, the weight of the golden retriever or the weight of the soup can. Uh, Variables are classified in two ways. They're either a categorical or a quantitative variable. A categorical variable puts you into a group. You can see this little boy and girl I put here because, of course, gender is a categorical variable. Eye color, um, favorite food. These are all things you might be asked that put you into a group of people or a category. The other kind of variable is what's called quantitative. A quantitative variable is one that is numeric. For example, the height and weight. You can see my tape measure and my scale here. Uh, a height, a weight, um, shoe size, uh, hand span, uh, score on the ACT. All of those things are quantitative. Most of the variables we will be dealing with in AP statistics are quantitative for the simple reason that we want to be able to analyze data using mathematical methods. So, of course, easier to do with quantitative data. But often we will uh, classify things with categories as a way to compare them. For example, um, the previous video talking about a uh, number of pairs of shoes. I could always analyze that by first breaking into categories and saying, um, you know, putting the males and females together and then comparing them. So a categorical variable of gender followed by the quantitative value of number of shoes. So we sometimes break things into categories, but as a method really of comparison of the quantitative variable we collected. A distribution. <coughs> a distribution is something that shows the values that occur and how often they occurred. I put a sample, uh, a sample here that shows that the values 5 to 50 occurred, 50 occurred twice, 45 occurred three times. Um, but I also wanted to just show, this is the plot we made in the previous video um, on number of pairs of shoes. And so I had done a bin width of 10 on my calculator. Okay, so this was uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. And actually, if you hit trace, you'll see you can actually get the frequencies by doing trace and kind of tabbing around. So I can tell that there are 12 in that first category because that's where I've highlighted. Um, but this allows us to see the values that occurred. Okay, so anywhere, and you know, I'm, it's a function of bin width here that I'd say, well, okay, values between 0 and 50 occurred. Uh, you know, 30 to 40 only occurred once, 40 to 50 only occurred once. So a distribution is anything I can see, kind of the range of values and how often those values occurred. Finally, I want to talk about the way we discuss or describe distributions. Uh, the first question on the free response 
on the AP exam almost always has to do with describing a distribution. And we use the acronym CUS. You can see it along the side here. CUS stands for center, unusual, spread, and shape. Okay, and I'm going to actually drag a description of that in. Okay, so C stands for center. We typically use this now. We talk about the median. So let's, let's just kind of write these things down for each, uh, each plot. Um, for this first plot, I, did a, uh, I, I grabbed a plot that was number of passengers in a vehicle. There are 32 data points here, and you can see, obviously, there's like a, someone that's driving alone. We've got, apparently got someone with a minivan. Uh, <laughs> because they've got quite a few passengers. So if we have 32, we count up here, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, well, then somewhere in the 1 category, this is our, our um, I'm going to put the center in black, just to kind of color code it to save room and time. Uh, the center is 1, okay? And here, uh, on this plot, the, uh, the bin is that 0 to 10 bin, that is our, our center. So we could even just say the 0 to 10 bin, uh, that's where our center is, somewhere between 0 and 10 on our plot of shoes that we've made earlier. Um, next, uh, I'm going to skip unusual for a second. We'll come back to that. Spread. The spread is a range. It's not an interval. Uh, it's, a, it's a range of values. So, for example, uh, here we said, well, 0 and 6, so that width of the interval is 6. Okay, so again, I'll color code, let's put this, uh, excuse me, we'll put unusual in red. We're going to put uh, spread in blue. The spread of this data was 6. Uh, the shoes, we see values from 0 to 50, so you could say the spread was 50, and the actual data, the, the actual values were between 2 and 43. So I'm actually going to write that down. I'm going to say it's 41. And you may not know that from the, um, again, from this plot, but in a previous video I did show the actual data. Um, so that's the actual data. Um, shape. Okay, so shape, we got a lot of ways to describe shape. And I think you could look at both these sets and say, boy, they they sure look skewed. Un uniform, um, if I could maybe just make a couple of little plots here. Um, I'm going to kind of cross off L for now. Uniform would mean every value is the same. Okay, That's, That didn't happen here. Mound means it looks kind of bell-shaped. We don't say normal. We just use the word mound, and we say that it has that shape. And the reason we stay away from using the word uh, normal is normal is a very specific kind of mound-shaped curve. And we'll get back to that later in, a, in a, a later video. But being normal, it takes an awful lot to show something as normal. So we would just say mound-shaped. Uh, skewed. I think is what we're dealing with here. Skewed is something either like this or the other way I guess would be like that. And it has kind of a tail. We, we say it kind of tails off towards outliers. So in the green one the tail is over here. The yellow one the tail is over here. And skew has a directional component and it always describes the direction of the tail. So this green is skewed right because the right side has the tail. And the yellow is skewed left, because the left side has the tail, or the lower part. So, both of our shapes are skewed to the right. Okay, Let's go back to unusual. I once saw unusual described as the big nose of the distribution. It's the thing that stands out to you. Um, and actually, let me go back for one second and talk about the modal. Um, modal uh, is, is a, you know, mode means most occurring. So modal, blank modal, is a way of describing uh, the amount of modes. And of course, if you're mound shaped, this looks like you have one mode, like you're right in the center. But something could also be bimodal, meaning it looks like that. 
Okay, in a situation where that might happen, think about you, you go to the playground and you measure everyone at the playground's heights. So you've got children and you've got their parents. So you may be bimodal. But this is, a, this is you know, describing something as unimodal or bimodal uh, can work as a nice descriptor as well. Okay, now let me go to unusual. So unusual is the thing that stands out to you. And I may just talk this through instead of writing it down. Uh, you know, you could talk about the fact that this seems to be an outlier. Six seems to be an outlier. Um, over here, you could talk about these two values being much higher than the other values. That's something unusual about this graph. Another thing to talk about, so maybe I'll just make a note of, of things you could think of about talking here. Outliers would be one thing to talk about. Another thing you could talk about when describing unusual is gaps. The fact that nobody had five passengers. The fact that nobody had between 20 and 30 shoes. Okay, So gaps is another thing that's nice to talk about. Uh, clusters. Talk about if, you know, if something were um, bimodal like this, why are, you know, why are they clustered apart like that? We, and I gave you an example where, yeah, it's pretty reasonable. You say the kids would be in the low end, adults would be on the one end, but those kind of clustered together with a big gap in between. So unusual, as I said, is the way to describe, like, what's something strange about this graph? What makes it different? Um, sometimes there aren't really any unusual things. It's a fair estimate that on the AP exam there would be because they'd like you to talk about these four things. So again, when you're asked to describe a distribution, describe where its center is, if there's anything unusual about the distribution, what the spread is, and remember it's, not a, ra it's a range, not an interval. Don't say between 2 and 43. Say it's 41 units wide and shape. Um, it could be uniform or symmetric or skew or unimodal or bimodal or mound-shaped. Um, these are the four things we talk about.